Hallelujah. When Jesus came for the first time, he came like a suffering savior. He supports betrayal, humiliation. But when he comes for the second time, is recorded in the book of Revelation. He came in exaltation. So this this fantastic period of exaltation makes Jesus different in Bible. Hi Emmanuel and today's topic is the Alpha and the Omega. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, Alpha and Omega is the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. It's like saying in the English alphabet, A and Z. So, each letter can be written, every word that can be said, any knowledge that could be known. Jesus is the creator of all things. There's nothing that exists that could not exist apart Jesus. We know. So, He is all. He is everlasting. So, apart Jesus, there's not anybody that can be more than Jesus Christ. Now, let's take a look in the place of the book of Revelation, where Alpha and Omega are listed. So, I am the Alpha and Omega, say the Lord God, who is, who was, and must come, the Almighty. Now, some are saying that Jesus is not even the speaker in his verse. So, they will say that this God, Father, God is a speaker and that God is the Alpha and the Omega. Now, some verse later, speak of Jesus and say, I am the first and the last. How do we know that Jesus is the speaker? So, here we will see the next. The verse says, and I was dead, and behold, now I am alive forever. This must be Jesus, because Jesus is the one who died for us in the cross of Calvary and came back to life. We have established that God is the Alpha and the Omega. And Jesus is the first, and Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. But so Jesus is the first and the last. But let's move to a to the end when all things are completed revelation chapter 21 says and he sits on the throne here i am making everything new and he told me write that this word are true and faithful and told me that i finished my job Alpha and Omega are the beginning and the end, and I will give from water, fountain of life, freely, he who is thirsty, who wills the will, inherit all things, and I will be his God, and now my son will be the speaker. So, Obviously, he says about this verse, he is the Alpha and the Omega. So, who is the speaker? Well, let's take a look at the fact that is very, very, very similar. And so, that Jesus, like, let us remember when Jesus said, was angered in the cross and say, is finished. It is finished. So we can see this word in Revelation also. So there's there's some analogies 
by the Bible, by the book of John and the Revelation. And this is not just a case. It is not just a case because Jesus was intending another thing by it is finished. Because if he didn't say that it is finished, that it is finished and there will not be a new life. No. He said that it is finished, but we didn't know that that was the start, the starting of something new. That it will be the start of something new. Something new that would take us from year zero to 2020, from 2020 to 2030, forever and ever, ever and ever, because he is the Alpha and the Omega. So, some verse that are really very similar, like there's some facts. So, uh, the water of life that is very similar to what you just see to the woman at the as they were. So <clears throat> he say that what you just say so he say to the woman that he could give her the living water. But also watch the beginning of the verse. He who sits on the throne, that sounds like God the Father. Yeah. So that sounds like God the Father. So he's starting to get a little we are starting to get a little confused. So like let's go to the final chapter for the last clue and say Behold, I come soon, and my reward is with me, to give everyone second his job. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first in and the last, the beginning and the end. So, hallelujah. So, now Jesus is the speaker. We know this as Jesus. Well, well a couple of verses later, says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to these things, but also look at the proclamation at the beginning. He says, Behold, come quickly. Who is coming quickly? Well, the New Testament has hundreds and hundreds of verses that speak to the second coming of Jesus Christ. But Let's keep it into the context. A few verses later, it says, And he who testifies to these things, saying, Surely I'm coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. There are probably the most interesting part in all of is that Jesus is quickly directed from the book of Isaiah. And he said, I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no God there is no God repeat it again there is no God now the speaker of this says the Lord the King of Israel and his Redeemer the Lord of us so it looks like we have a major problem here God is the Alpha and Omega, but also Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. God is the first and the last, but also Jesus is the first and the last. So, do we have two Alphas and Omegas? Do we have two first and lasts? No. Because Jesus and God, they're one thing. Son and Father are one thing. So they're the same thing. Once again, the Bible has declared that Jesus is God and he is worthy to be exalted as God. Glory be to God. So I'm 
I'm speaking about the history of Alpha and Omega. Don't forget that we're talking of a name of Jesus Christ. So, as I read before, Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, but we are a little bit confused about the real meaning of Alpha and Omega. Well, as I said before, Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Then, Omega is the last letter of the Ionic Greek alphabet. So we can take it like A and Z in the English alphabet. So, in the Bible, the Bible makes an analogy. It makes an analogy between the Alpha and Omega and the Bible. So, the language of the past and the language of now. So, why are we seeing a Greek name in our Bible? So, you never ask yourself. So, since Alpha and Omega are a Greek letter and Greek word, so why are we going to see them inside the Bible? The Bible, it isn't Greek. It isn't translated in Greek. For charity, to see some Bible in Greek language, but our King James Bible, New Living Translation, they aren't in Greek. So why are we seeing those two letters? Why? For everything, there's an explanation. So, well, then after Jesus has died and resurrected in the cross, uh, the apostles lived for several travels, several trips all over the world. So some of them, they read with their boats in Greek. So gradually they adapt to the Greek traditions, Greek use and customs. And they began to speak Greek. Because if they have to talk, if they have to announce the good news, they have to know the language of the place, naturally. So, we can see who read the Revelation. The Revelation was written by John. So, John, it wasn't in Greece, but it was in the Middle East. So we can see in the Middle East. So John, you know, by that time in the Middle East, they speak Greek because of some, you know, the Greeks go do war with the Middle East countries and like they win the war and, you know, if they win the war, the language going, the people that there in the Middle East, they're going to learn the language of the Greeks because because this is the consequences of the war. So, by that time, you know, the apostle after to talk the language of the place. And the same thing happened to John. So, John, you know, he written the revelation. But the, re the first language that he used to read the revelation was in Greek. Why? Because if someone after to read it in that country... You have to write it in a language that they can comprehend. So he can't write it in Aramaic. So we can ask. But he didn't born. He wasn't born in Middle East. So why isn't writing? Why did he written the Revelation in Greek? Because he can even write it in Aramaic. But he didn't want to tell because nobody can know what it was writing. So, for this now, we can see. So, I haven't answered the questions. So, why can we still see Alpha and Omega in our Bible? Because after many revision, many translation of the manuscript because there were only three manuscripts Alexander 
some Latin manuscripts and couple manuscripts. So all this manuscript was translated to modern translation. Like the oldest of the modern translation was the King James Bible. So that Bible, he omits some Greek words because he translated to English as we know it now. He omits some Greek word from the original Bible because if not, it was because we. It's not like now that there there wasn't having computer that they can translate in Google Translator and like they can translate the Bible. No. They do what how that how they can do. So they translate some word, not all word that they can translate. So some word in Greek language they omit them. It's for this, but now why did they leave Alpha and Omega? They leave Alpha and Omega because he was having he was having a meaning that holds King James to leave that word. So let us see the mean. So it means that the most holy Christ is the one that we bring the beginning and the end. So King James, he translated the Bible, but he say, wait, leave that word. Why? Because that word, you have a very heavy meaning. And it means the beginning and the end. So it means that Jesus Christ, our God, is the beginning and the end. He is going to bring the beginning and the end. He have already bring the beginning with the creation. He created us. And he's going to bring the end. And again, a new beginning. Forever and ever. So, even what I said before, Jesus and God are the same thing because in the Bible they're very similar because Jesus and God they're represented with the same adjective like Jesus is the Alpha and Omega but even God also is the Alpha and Omega so for example but King James want to leave this because why because Jesus and God, they are the same thing. So, independently of the person, there is only one Alpha and only one Omega. Glory be to God. So, turn with me to these Bible verses. So, Revelation... 1 verse 8 says I am the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending seek the Lord which is and which world and which is come the Almighty this is King James Version I'm going to read by New Living Translation Revelation 1 verse 8 says I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. Let's go to Revelation 1, 17. And it says, King James, And when I saw him, I fell at his, I fell at his feet as dead, and he lived his right and upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. So let's go to the next verse Revelation 1, verse 18 says, I am he that lived and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of him and of death. So let's go to Revelation 21, 5 to 7. 
Okay. So, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for this word are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is artist of the fountain, of the water of life, freely. Verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. Therefore, all the verse tell us that unlike the last time that Jesus Christ came to the earth, in this part of the Bible, they represented Jesus like a king, a judge of peace, a changer, a ruler of words. Jesus presents himself in his most glorious form. And who will bring the end? He is going to bring the beginning and the end. But which will then prove to be the beginning? The beginning of an eternal era of peace and glory forever and ever. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the beginning and the end. He is the authority, the bread of life. He is Emmanuel. He is the first and the last. He can create and destroy. So, this verse gives us that. There's an opposition. He is the opposition in a perfect equilibrium of peace. So, light and darkness. So, in a perfect equilibrium, it can bring the creation. But it can also bring the destruction. It can be... It can bring... The life, but it can also call us to a paradise. So let's pray. Glory be to God. So, hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, you are our Alpha and Omega. You take the form of man to come and die for our transgression. Father Lord, I commit us in your hands. You are our Alpha and Omega, you are our beginning and the end. Father, be behind us in our road, anywhere we go, in our going, in our coming, in our waking up, in our sleeping. Father, let us be the beginning of a new life for us. And Father, be the ending of our suffer, of our torture, of our humiliation. Father, bring a beginning of new life, a beginning of new era, new period of peace in our family, in our life, in our day, in our marriage, in our work. And bring the end of all iniquities, of all bad things in our life. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray to you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to my blog that I will put the link below. And to my YouTube channel. Remember to, to tap to the notification box and push the ringing bell. Bye!